All right, thanks. I'm Nicholas, and I will talk about uh, going from GPU poor to poor GPU rich, uh, specifically how we uh, got lots of AMD GPUs for open source research, mainly drawing from this paper, scaling data constrained language models, uh, but also some insights I was lucky to have with LNAI's Olmo project. So first, securing compute. One option is using public clusters. And in Europe, there's a lot of public clusters available. For example, for the Bloom project, we use the Jean Zay cluster in France. And for these projects I'm going to talk about, we used Lumi in Finland. Uh, the caveat with this cluster is that it's all AMD GPUs, but there's a lot of them. So we were able to get 7 million AMD GPU hours. Uh, for comparison, Bloom only used 1 million. And uh, the Bloom model had 176 billion parameters, so that was pretty huge. Tevin even called the situation compute infinite. However, the big problem was that there was no record of LMs being trained on AMD. Um, <laughs> there was no research being done on AMD GPUs as far as we were aware. So at that point in time, there were a bunch of really cool code bases for training large language models, but most of them were focused on NVIDIA GPUs, uh, nothing for AMD and obviously nothing for other GPU providers. So we created a code base that um, has a long history. So basically, uh, there was NVIDIA with its Megatron LM code base, and then Microsoft had DeepSpeed, and they got merged into Megatron DeepSpeed, um, done by Microsoft and NVIDIA together. And then we revamped that into Megatron DeepSpeed under the Big Science Workshop for training Bloom. And then we took that again and uh, turned it into Megatron DeepSpeed for AMD hardware um, and NVIDIA. And I think now, in 2024, we're in a much better situation where um, there's a lot of good frameworks. Our framework is already uh, really outdated. Uh, so probably uh, GPT Neo X from Eleuther AI or Olmo from Eln AI are some of the best um, ones to choose right now, I think. But I'm probably missing many here, and there, there might be others that are also really good to work with. Though there are still none for other GPU providers, be it Cerebras or Huawei, that um, work well in practice for our node. Those are on Cerebras and AMD. The GPT Neo X? Oh, okay, that's impressive. I guess I'm... Yeah, I guess there hasn't been any open source LM trained on that uh, on that hardware. We train on Frontier. Okay. Yeah, that's on AMD. We train on okay, that's great. So we should. I should probably... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm even so out, out of date at this point. Leverage. Yeah, so it's definitely gotten much better, and I think that's super exciting uh, that we can yeah work on all of those hardware uh, platforms now. Um, so now we we had this kind of set up, and we could move on to experiments. And I'm going to talk about some of the challenges we faced. Uh, the biggest one being poor GPUs. So this is how the GPUs scaled in, in T-flops. So when we increased the number of GPUs, the T-flops on the left-hand side, the T-flops per GPU would just drop radically. Uh, this is equivalent to the samples per second per GPU uh, dropping really quickly. So essentially, the more GPUs we use, the more of them would just be idle and not do anything. Uh, and we would like fall off a cliff for all of those projects. The situation for, or the, the solution for this is, um, I think, breaking down the problem into uh, where exactly um, why exactly are we dropping off a cliff? So there's this great blog post that goes into detail. Uh, in our case, with the Lumi compute cluster, we were definitely bandwidth bound. So the communication was really poor because there's no infinity band across uh, AMD nodes. So instead, um, we have to figure out how are we going to solve this poor communication problems. And a few solutions are, for example, using a larger batch size. Um, you can't go too big because then it's going to impact the performance, but you can at least max out a bit. Uh, avoiding high, com high communication parallelism strategies. Uh, and then if, the, if the, the project allows training many small models rather than a few very big models, I think for Olmo, this wasn't really possible, but at least for uh, scaling data constrained language models, we could just rely on, on many small models instead. And the next big problem was downtimes. So uh, yeah, we had massive downtimes of multiple weeks. Often they would be unannounced or completely unexpected. So it's important to mention here that the cluster, the Lumi cluster, it was the first year of operation. So we were essentially the first project on this cluster. The advantage was we had the entire cluster for us and we could scale up to like 2,200 nodes. But the problem was suddenly none of them would work or the cluster would be down for multiple weeks and it was very difficult to, to deal with at times. So the solution that we found is uh, shifting to non-compute work. Uh, I spend a lot of time on the appendix <laughs> and um, coding and maybe other stuff. Uh, or if you have other compute, like an internal cluster, that could also be an option. We didn't really have that option. Um, and otherwise, shifting to other projects. And the third big problem we faced were hardware failures. Uh, so especially with AMD GPUs, they aren't as, as mature yet. So we had lots of problems um, with those nodes. And the, the best solution we found is just excluding them. 
uh, eventually it got a bit out of hand and we, we started to exclude like half of the cluster. But, but yeah, that's pretty much the best solution you can go with here. Just have a good script to identify the bad nodes and then exclude them. Uh, I also uh, spammed the support team, but that, that didn't always help. Um, yeah. And yeah, and then finally, uh, releasing everything and thanking the providers. Uh, so the, the Scaling Data Constraint, constraint Language Models paper uh, was awarded, got an award at the last NURBS conference, and then OMO obviously has been super impactful. Um, and then kind of we circled that back to those providers and they put like blog posts on their, on their website so that they could get some recognition for providing the compute and everything. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah.